very much, uh, Murthy, ladies and gentlemen, my distinguished uh, panel members. Uh, it's a great privilege to be here with you this afternoon. I want to thank you all for your support and your leadership and the moral courage and particularly the leadership we've seen from the active members of the Congress who've been here with us today. Uh, former members, uh, friends up here, colleagues, uh, Senator D'Amato, Governor Rendell and I have become very close friends over the last uh, year. Um, you know, I've spent many days in hearing rooms like this, usually sitting in front of the uh, panel answering questions. When I was leaving Washington after eight years, my staff said, uh, we have did a statistic and you've testified more than any other head of a federal agency because I reported to two intelligence committees, two justice committees, two appropriation committees, and anybody else who wanted to call me up here. So I have a lot of experience as a witness, uh, and that's what we are functioning as today. We are functioning mostly as witnesses. Uh, the people who have come to this cause, have you heard, an absolutely incredibly diverse uh, group of people. I don't think I know of another cause that, have, that, that would have coalesced and brought together this amazing group of people. We wrote a letter to the Secretary of State on January 20th. It's public now. You can see it. The, the signatories on that letter are absolutely incredible. Attorney generals, CIA directors, NATO commanders, Marine Corps commandants, senators, governors, ambassadors, national security advisors. Um, and we all have come to one single but critical conclusion. The situation in Camp Ashraf now is, as you've heard, an emergency situation. We've seen uh, genocide in two examples coming from the Iraqi government. And sad to say, watching videos where Iraqi soldiers with American uniforms, American weapons, trained by our soldiers, uh, go in and massacre unarmed innocent people twice. On two occasions, by the way, when our Secretary of Defense, incredibly, was in Iraq uh, meeting with the Prime Minister. So we have a lot of history here, recent history, to fear another genocide, a looming genocide. And as uh, Professor Dershowitz said, we have a very unique advantage here in the sense that we have witnesses, your witnesses, wear witnesses, uh, to what has happened here and what could happen. And our goal here is to make sure that genocide does not occur. Several things that have to be done, and I agree with all of my fellow panelists here, uh, we need to change our game plan a little bit this year. Uh, we've been writing letters, we've been on editorial boards, uh, the governor's been on TV. Uh, we have talked and studied and advocated and answered questions for everyone who wanted to learn about these facts, which are very important. Uh, we're going to take I'm happy to say here, not only for myself, but we have a sort of a small steering group of uh, incredibly prominent people who've been working with this. And a couple of weeks ago, the governor and I, the former Secretary of Homeland Security, we found ourselves demonstrating outside the White House. Can you imagine? Uh, some of my sources, I have friends and sources still in, in government agencies, you might imagine, uh, said that accompanying Prime Minister Maliki, and this is incredible, right? Accompanying Prime Minister Maliki was the Iraqi Secretary of Transportation. And I said, well, so what? I said, no, you don't understand, Louis. Uh, his name is uh, Amiri, and he is the former head of the IRGC Badr Brigade, the IRGC, which is the terrorist enterprise for the mullahs who run Iran. And, you know, here's some pictures of him kissing the ring of the Ayatollah. Uh, so he's in the White House with the president, and we're outside demonstrating. Um, I said, you know... I said, you know, I don't have arrest powers anymore except as a citizen. But I said, I really would like to interview this guy. I'd like to ask him some questions about Kobar Towers, which was an IRGC terrorist operation that murdered 19 Americans in June of 1996. The Saudi Hezbollah performed that atrocious uh, terrorist attack against the United States, killing 19 of our airmen. The people who were responsible for that attack 
were trained by the IRGC in the Bekaa Valley. They got cash and passports at the Iranian embassy in Damascus. General al-Sharifi supervised this attack. When we investigated it and went over to Saudi Arabia and the FBI interviewed people who were responsible, who told us all this, we brought this back to the National Security Advisor to the President of the United States. And we said, we have evidence, not information, we have evidence that the Iranian government using the IRGC, Mr. Amiri's organization, attacked Kobar Towers and murdered 19 Americans. 